Okay, here we are. In this episode of Talking About Orcs, the last Talking About Orcs before October, we're going over the four primary orc tactical archetypes. Now these are just kind of like an overview. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of detail though, as the video will be way too long. Uh, but these are the four things you'll see in an orc army, and most armies will actually consist of a blend of these. So don't be surprised to go, well, I do this and this and this. Of course you do. You don't play usually play an, a strict single archetype. And when we, as I said, when we're talking about an archetype here, we're just going very broad. Not getting into too specific as to what units to bring and what not to bring. Um, so of the four types, there are four of them. First one is, of course, wow, this pen is pretty bad for this. Horde. Or Green Tide. Two. Speed Freaks. Wow. Need better pins. Speed Freaks. Your second type. Third. Dread Mob which is extremely popular and a lot of fun to play. And fourth and final, gun line. Probably the least popular, but no less effective. So I said, most of your armies will consist of a mix of these because you don't run usually just one. I mean, Speed Freaks, you can run solo. Same with Horde, but, and Dread Mob. I guess, I guess you can run each three of these completely so, um, complete in an entire list, but gun line, not so much. You need some backup for that. So let's go one at a time here. You know, there are going to be some sub, there's one just real quick before I get into this. There is one more subtype that I've been playing, the Air Force. The problem with the Air Force is that the rules, boots on the ground, don't really allow you to run a pure Air Force archetype. Um, Cause you have to have stuff on the ground. Otherwise you just auto, auto lose the game. So anyway, so that's something, it, it's kind of an archetype, but the current set of rules in the 8th edition don't really allow it to be viable or don't actually allow it to be played at all. <clears throat> so Horde, Green Tide. Um, pros of the Green Tide. Um, more bodies and bullets. That is your primary goal. More bodies and bullets. You want to make sure you can get across the board with sufficient force remaining to take down your targets in close combat. Um, more bodies and bullets. Uh, very good close combat. Very good close combat. Just a massive number of attacks, especially with the current index where everything is strength four to start with. So. The worst you're going to be wounding is on sixes, of course, but and that's only the biggest things. Most everything else can be just five. So, uh, uh, close on. and that's really about it. Those are the pros. That is that is the point of the horde is to have more bodies than your opponent has bullets, and just overwhelm them with numbers. Cons: moving models. Big big con, especially if you're in any sort of a time-constrained environment like a tournament. Um, moving 180 models isn't fun. I hate it. I stopped playing it because I don't really like it. Um, susceptible to large number of attacks. So specifically, I'm talking about Mortarian, Knights, and even the own Gork's own, Orc's own Gorkonaut. <clears throat> Anything that has three attacks per attack at strength seven or eight with a minus um, is going to just waste your boys faster than anything you can possibly imagine. So um, 
And uh, well, another con is uh, one dimensional. One dimensional. Boring, in other words. Moving models can be as annoying and boring and the fact that all you do is run up and hit things in the face. There's not much to it. Not much strategy, not much thinking. You just run up and hit things in the face. That's the horde. So when you, when you do play a horde, the most common units, of course, like you're probably the only units, you'll have boys and storm boys. Boys and storm boys. Um, and then you have buff characters. Buff characters. Um, so boys, the storm boys, though, the, the downside of storm boys is in competitive play, you're going to be limited to 90 of these. Boys, there is no limit. Still practically, you know, three units of boys, three units of storm boys. That's 180 models. That's most of your points. And it's pretty darn effective. I, I won't joke. It's effective, which is unfortunately because it makes the index kind of one solo build index. So, anyway, that's the horde. You have boys, storm boys, and buff characters. That's your horde archetype. Second archetype, as I said, is speed freaks. Uh, pros to the speed freaks. Fast, obviously. Um, tech, uh, flexible. Objectives. So in an objective-based game, having models that can move quickly, get to those objectives and uh, hold them fairly well. And it works out pretty well. Um, down, uh, cons, weak. Uh, it's basically an MSU, multiple small units. So you're going to have uh, a lot of units to give up uh, kill points, you're have, uh, a lot of units to give up kills in, in ITC format, um, and, and the units are going to be fairly small, so they're going to be, they're not going to benefit from mob rule, they're not going to benefit from uh, orc uh, tricks, and they're going to die pretty easily. Um, when I was playing trucks, the biggest problem, I lost more models to trucks uh, to rolling ones on the passengers when the truck dies than anything else. Just about. So, con MSU. Um, not very close combat. Uh, limited close combat. Limited close combat attacks. Because uh, model units of 12 boys suffer a lot in Overwatch. Um, and they're not very, there's not a lot of attacks there to really support them. And you're not going to be able to really buff them with your characters because you're going to be out of position. You're not going to be able to get that, get them into that circle. Um, but when it comes to an objective game, this is very effective. Very effective. And well, lots of fun because you're not just running up 180 models. So when it comes to, for what are your main, main models here? When it comes to speed tricks, there's a lot. You're going to have trucks course trucks coptas the new buggies um other tanks a kill tank kill tank tank and big track are also good um Units to go in the Speed Freaks because both of these can can uh, contain transport models. Um, lots of things that uh, you can do, and I mean, things like this, even the Grot tanks, Grot tanks. Oh, and flyers. Don't forget those. Grot tanks are another good thing. Decent shooting, especially the Mega Tank. I went over that before. Mega Tank's not a bad um, themed rocket platform. So this is your Speed Freaks. And again, Speed Freaks are normally going to be a supplement to other things in your army. You're not going to run just Speed Freaks because they're just too fragile to really be viable. So that is your second archetype. Third archetype is, of course, the ever popular Dread Mob. Uh, 
Uh, pros. Low drops. A few drops. Get a better chance of getting that plus one to go first. Um, very uh, high toughness and no more wounds. Resilient. So you got high T, three plus save, and mini wounds. Uh, very resilient. Lots of good stuff. Um, cons. Low model count. Elite army. Uh, susceptible to knights. Knights suck when you're playing Dread Knight. Knights. Um, fairly slow. Fairly. Not entirely. But no, no f slower than um, the, the horde but you're not going to be able to have as many models to get to objectives as you can you would be able to with a with a um horde army um yeah so dread mob is a lot of fun to play i love playing dread mob because things are just so much tougher and a lot of the army is going to be hitting on fours because you're going to be taking cans and cans are just awesome um so again primary unit types are going to be cans. This pan's just about dead. Well, I got more. We got cans. Uh, dreads. Knots. Um, uh, Mecha dread. And KFF mix. Mick on bike. Those are your primary units when running a dread mob. And you can easily build an entire list of nothing but but walkers. And <clears throat> it's a lot of fun, I can tell you. Dread mob is very good. Against certain armies, your the dread mob is gonna be just a a challenge. Because most armies are gonna bring a good mix of anti-infantry and anti-tank shooting. Um but with a dread mob, if you only bring walkers, their in infantry and shooting is not going to be that effective, especially against cans. We're going to be wounding on fives, and you have a three up armor save. So, um, but there's not a lot of tactical flexibility in the dread mob. Um, but there's decent shooting, especially if you can support these things with vehicles like the kill tank and the uh, big tracks. Okay. And the last ar archetype, which is probably the least popular, of course, is the gun line. So, pros. Shooting. Uh, never underestimate shoot or shooting. Um, daka, daka, daka. This new rule for the codex is going to be huge for an army like this. Huge. Um, and with the orc shooting, I mean, you're gonna be putting out so many shots and with the DACA getting extra shots, there's gonna be a lot to say about running a gun line. Um, the downside is, of course, cons is resiliency. We no longer have the two plus cover save Aegis defense line that we exploited with Ludas in the last edition. Um, you're gonna have a lot of infantry, a lot of infantry models that don't have a lot of strength to them or the resiliency to them. Uh, so five up involve save KFFs cover. You're not gonna get a lot out of it. So uh, resiliency is your biggest problem with the gun line. Um, but if you like to shoot. Don't be afraid to shoot. Um, that can be very, very um, effective. So what are your main units? You can have Ludas, of course, and artillery, the mech guns and uh, big guns. Uh, you have Grotz as your screen. 
you have you basically use grasses guardsmen would be used in an IG army where you have them to screen your shooty units. Um, you can also have kill tanks. Kill tanks. And big tracks if you really want to. Big tracks. So there's gonna be primary primary units in a um, gunline army. Um, you may maybe also do some fortifications. Yes, it's a big point investment for the fortifications, but it might give your Ludas um, just a little bit more survivability than they would have otherwise. And if you're shooting Ludas out of your fortifications, maybe it'll take some last cannon pressure off the kill tanks. Because kill tanks are pretty good. So, go over this pretty quickly. Still a little longer than I wanted it to, because I went over everything very quick, because there's a lot of information here. And the most important thing is that don't be afraid to mix archetypes and especially with the new codex coming out and clan traits you are definitely going to be probably playing soup clan soup more than ever before so what are we looking forward to in the neck in the codex clan soup that is to say you're going to be running your three detachments each detachment is going to be a different clan, and each detachment thus is going to be a different archetype. You're going to run boys in a goth formation to get the, the exploding sixes, if that turns out to be true. You're going to be running your ludas in either death skulls or um, bad moons for the rerolls, and you're going to be running support units as speed freaks or bad moons for or blood axe. I mean, for their extra resiliency. So, but yeah. So the archetypes themselves right now are pretty easy to play separately because we don't have any clan traits to dis distinguish them about. But once we get the clan traits and once we get our clan soup going, you're definitely going to see a lot more mixed archetypes than probably ever before. Um, so what is your favorite archetype? Mine personally is the Dread Mob. That is my favorite. I like the resiliency. I love the can models. I love the Gorkonaut model, and I like the lower model count. So what is your favorite archetype? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Talking About Orcs. Please subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications for new Talking About Orcs videos every Wednesday, new battle reports every Friday, and hobby videos whenever I can. Thanks for watching.